Alrighty, let's take a quick look through the Gigabytes um, GPU server. And this is going to be the new edition that is kind of superseding the HP ProLiant. Um, and I'll get into that in a little while on why and all of that good stuff. But this is um, kind of the next iteration of what we're doing. And um, you'll have to excuse the sound and the room. It is currently a disaster area because I am trying to put together a server and there's never enough space to do that. So, um, but yeah, let's talk through this really quick. First off, this guy has um, 10 drive bays here in the front. These are two and a half inch SATA drive bays. Um, and I've got the five SATA drives that I had from the uh, HP ProLiant are in there. And then if we come down just a little bit here, you can see that we've got dual processors in here. These are going to be the 77 Six three or six one. I'm forgetting which one they are. Um, they are sixty four cores, one hundred and twenty eight threads. Um, pretty monstrous CPUs. They are not the high TDP ones. They are just the standard ones. Um, cost difference there was more than enough to make up for the um, desire to have more processing power. So, and the other thing was that the processors actually um, clock a little bit higher under single-threaded workloads. So, um, again, kind of a balance there where I'm not going to be running everything at 100% all the time. So a little bit more single-threaded actually helps me out. But um, right now, this is running the... Um, 7642s from the file server because I ordered the incorrect processors. So I ordered the P processors rather than the um, straight processor number. So the P processor denotes that it can only be used in a single socket. Um, it was just a mix-up on my part. The model numbers is almost exactly the same with a P on the end. And then um, the seller was selling two of them together, so my brain just short-circuited and said, well, if there's two together, that must be what I'm looking for. So reality, not as much. But thankfully, the seller's been pretty cool about it. We're getting that all sorted. Um, and then if we come down here, you can see, maybe that we have a metric ton of RAM in here. So I took all of the RAM out of the um, HP Pro Lion and put it in here. Probably not the final configuration on this. Uh, this RAM that came out of the Pro Lion is 2400 speed, whereas this server supports 3200. So I may bump that up in the future, but it's not an immediate need. This will get me going out of the gate. Um, and then we can come down here and you can see the fan wall that we've got here. And these guys are screamers. Um, this has 12 fans um, providing a ton of airflow. Right now it's actually running a little bit louder than it should. I'm still working on fan curves and optimization and all of that, but the um, long and short of it is it moves a ton of air through here um, and can be tamed. Um, if you get the fan speed down to about 10%, this server is not that bad. But I keep stalling the fans out, so I need to figure out why that's happening and see if I can address that. Then if we come down through here, you'll see some familiar faces. This is the Mellanox 100 gig networking card. 
talk about the fan in a moment. And then we've got the Black Magic uh, 4K capture card. We've got the High Point USB C card. And then we've got a new addition to this setup. And this is a um, pull from my old build, uh, my old Threadripper build. And this is a four way NVMe card. Right now, I'm only using two of those NVMe drives um, that I had laying around, but it supports up to four with bifurcation. So that gives me the ability to pop in a NVMe card because by default, the system does not support an NVMe card. It's got all of its um, lanes are going to these eight slots here. So, um, and that gives a ton of bandwidth, and this is PCIe Gen 4, um, which gives me a little bit more bandwidth for the um, high-end cards like the 7900 XTXs. So, um, why is that fan there, and why is it not turning? Well, as it turns out, I picked up some adapters to plug into these PC, these are um, EPS 12 volt connectors, and I need um, PCIe connectors rather than EPSC 12 connectors. So what this is, is it's four pins on the top are 12 volt, and four pins on the bottom are ground for each one of these, and these little guys here were supposed to see if I can focus in on this. Maybe. Yeah. This guy was supposed to plug in there and give power to the devices. Well, I plug it in and find out that the GPUs are not being detected, which I found very strange because they were working just fine in the other server. So I did some digging and pulled out the old multimeter and found out I'm not getting any voltage through there. So um, I hooked up one of the devices that came from Gigabyte, and these are just simple pass-through connectors. So these just add length, so it's a male-to-male. And I was getting power on those. So... What that tells me is there's something wrong with the cables that I got. So I ordered another set of cables that will be a female end to this. And then um, we can adapt these into the cards. So that will provide power to that little fan, which honestly right now it doesn't need because it is getting plenty of airflow through there and power to my 7900 XTXs, which are not in the build right now because I was struggling with them. So, um, other notable features on this server, it's got um, two 10 gig NICs in the back and a management port on an OCP connection, and it's got three 2200 watt power supplies to give it plenty of juice and let's see what else is there. Um, the UI is pretty decent. Um, not too bad there. A couple of really weird things. I could not get the TPM to work on this board. Um, it just would not select the AMD TPM devices. So that caused me a lot of heartburn and issues there. So I ended up having to install Windows without TPM which is not exactly what I wanted to do, but that's what I had to do. So, um, but in any instance, this guy, um, once we get the appropriate cables in and we get everything up and running, um, will slot in, um, oh, and I'll talk about that too, um, will slot in and give uh, new life to the render server. Now, um, as we talk about slotting, and I guess I'll show this, even though it is an absolute disaster. Um, 
because I had to pull parts from every computer that I've got here. But you can see that this HP slides out, and so does the Super Micro. But Gigabyte, in all of their wisdom, did not design this server with sliding rails. I read that it had a rail kit on there, and couldn't really find a lot of data on it. There's a good reason for that. Because this rail kit... See if I can slide this into frame here. Is just a shelf. It doesn't slide at all. And to add insult to injury, it's a 28 inch where my rack is 27. So that makes everything very frustrating to deal with. But um, that said, I'm going to look into um, other shelving units that I can use to put this in place without having to um, use the Gigabyte shelf that they've got, something that I can slide in and out. So looking into that, there are some options. They're all expensive, um, but we'll figure something out there. Um, so yeah, this is kind of where the server's at right now. This is why I've not really been producing a lot of videos, is because this guy has been um, tedious to set up. But um, I think once I get everything up and going, it'll be pretty good. But I will sign off from here.